Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Mindfully Curious podcast. My name is Steph, and I have the pleasure and honor of being the host for this space. Today, I get to chat with Connor Locke. He is the owner and founder of the brand design agency called Seven. I'm super excited to have this conversation with Connor because he is one of those people that just exude a wild creative vibe while also being a very serious and successful entrepreneur. And I think for me, holding on to both of those energies seems a little bit harder um, to master than it seems like for him. So during this conversation, he really goes into depth of how creativity has shown up for him throughout his life. And I thought it was pretty cool during this conversation, instead of calling his experiences a journey or whatever, he calls them adventures. And I thought that was an excellent way to frame the whole creative journey. And Connor really is a person that loves to take the path less traveled. And he is not very scared of stuff. So he has some really fun, amazing adventures that he shares with us. He shares so much wisdom about what it's like owning your own design agency, what it's like working with design clients. He also weighs in on what artists can do when it comes to choosing to brand yourself as a person and as your work. As usual, tons of hashtag golden knowledge nuggets dropped on this conversation. If you're interested in following Connor on social media, you can find him at the number seven, a visual craftsman. And again, that is on Instagram or you can go to his website, which is follow seven. And if you're interested in connecting with me, you can find me on Instagram at rabbit legion or on any of the other social portals at rabbit legion, rabbit legion, the club, as always would love to hear your feedback. If any of the content seems helpful to you, you connect to it. You are always so very welcome and encouraged to send me a dm on social media or you can use the voice link located under the show notes to leave a message for the show if you want to make that public we can absolutely facilitate that for you if you want to leave it private that is cool too and if you're listening on a podcast platform please make sure you take a minute and drop a little review, some five stars, whatever you're feeling like. As always, so much love and gratitude for you being here and for the guests who take their time to have these conversations and indulge my mindful curiosity. Connor, I'm so happy to have you here. What up, Steph? What up? So, I'm really excited to have you here because I feel like you are one of the people that I know that just kind of has this like super strong vibe of like wild creativity. And I, while you have that vibe, also you have managed, I don't know how, to kind of channel all of that energy and build like a pretty successful and large business. And I think that's, you know, pretty awesome. So if you would would not mind sharing with us, how did your journey with creativity start? Uh, I mean, when I first came into this world, do you mean? <laughs> um, or just like with the business <laughs> and stuff, because man, you better have like a week designated out for me to talk about when I discovered creativity. I mean, yeah, it's just been in me all my, all my life, you know, um, kind of fought against it a little bit for a while. Um, but yeah, it was one of those things like I, uh, I guess I'll give like a little short story of it into it just to 
I mean, being a kid, I, I kind of figured out things quicker than most. Um, and at first I was like, would see like, there was no filter on my creativity or my like imagination. And I would just go. And, you know, I know this is the case with a lot of people when they're kids, you know, like, cause we don't have all these filters that are placed upon us as we grow, we grow out of creativity, which is a big thing. Um, but I noticed just from like, I would figure these things out. And then I was kind of growing up. I moved every two to three years of my life because of my dad's job. And so I was always the new kid. And so it's, you're always the new kid. Oh, and then also too, to top it off. Oh, he's the new weird kid who like has like imaginary friends and like has all these weird ideas and stuff. And when you're a kid, like you just want to feel accepted. So, you know, I got picked on a lot um, growing up and I struggle with that because, uh, you know, I understood like that I'm, I'm a deeply passionate person. And when that would happen, I kind of hid that. And I, I don't know, this sounds kind of lame, but it's like, you know, my superpower or whatever. I'm like to like, just be like everybody else I had to hide that and push that down so I would appear normal to everyone else and so I like I was saying before kind of like fought against it and like hid it away just so I could blend in with everybody else and you know just be the new kid and then hopefully <laughs> make some friends so um that's you know it was always in me but I never really expressed it too much and I fast forward through all my traveling and meeting people. And I slowly, like I was super into sports and just like this competitive nature. And um, just cause like I wanted to like prove myself uh, to people. And it was like, you know, my creativity would like kind of eat you out a little bit, like through drawing, I'd always draw on like test papers and stuff. And I never thought of doing anything with it uh, until when I was in, my one of my teachers in England uh Miss Hales like pulled me out of the classroom and was like you know told me like Connor you have something you need to like take this seriously and do something with it and of course you know when you're that age it's like don't tell me what to do <laughs> wait how old were you at that point uh, I was like around 14 or 15 okay yeah. um and so that that went on and then I moved back to the country and I did like a year in uh, of American high school and my art teacher Mr. Grills uh, saw something in me too and like just his approach like went was a little different to me like rather than saying this is what you have to do it was more like you know here are the options and like the you'll you'll find the the right answer somewhere in between and that kind of really stuck with me. And so then I started to get a little more serious about it and pursue it. And also too, it came at a point where I realized, yeah, I'm not going to make it into the NBA or <laughs> do all that shit, you know? So, uh, I, kinda... I hear you. Dude. I wanted to be, uh, in the X games when I was like 17, that was my goal. And I had never snowboarded. I would like skate, but that's it. Yeah. And I moved to Denver and I was like, yeah, I'm going to be in the X games. We like, anyway i got it yeah heck yeah uh i feel you but it it yeah it just came down to me like giving it like just giving it a go finally and um i knew nothing about uh i just knew that i i had all these creative ideas and i know i could draw um but i i knew nothing about design and then i was it's funny like so when i uh before I even moved to Charleston, I was actually on my way to like graduated high school, was looking at colleges and was going to go do uh, a degree in fine arts and, and concentration in illustration. And I was actually coming out to Denver. Uh, and then things sort of flip flopped. And right before I was coming out of Denver, I uh, met my friend, John Dixon. Um, he was I was skateboarding at this, uh, the skate park and he had a skate camp with them and all these kids with him. And I, I, uh, helped him out and he was like, man, I really dig your skating. And he's like, if you ever need a job, I just open up a, a skate park in Charleston and this and that. And I'm like, Oh, interesting. So then I like Googled where is Charleston? <laughs> <laughs> it's 
<laughs> so I was like, oh man, hmm, that's like three hours away. Cause at the time I was up in Greenville, South Carolina. And um, I was like, in my head, I was like, hmm, I was like beach or snow. And coming from Manchester, England, I was like, yeah, let's, let's try this beach thing out. So I looked and I found that they had a, a program down in Charleston and then hit up John and was like, yo, what about that job? And so I ended up getting paid to skateboard like and work at a skate park all through college. And then I found design, which I'm like, what is all this stuff and everything? Why do so I need wait, to know? Does about- that mean college at Charleston? No, it was the Art Institute of Charleston. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So from there, I, you know, was going through the courses and I did really well with like figure drawing and all that stuff. And then when the, you know, like 2D design and all that kind of came into play, I was like, what is this stuff? And then when I flipped my, when I came to the realization that it's because I love solving problems and I found out, wow, like, so design is I can solve visual communication problems with my creativity and I can make a living off of it. I was like, oh my God, I'm hooked. So it just went off. And I mean, you know, I just honed in, did my work and uh, actually graduated valedictorian of the school, all that stuff, which I thought was hilarious. Um, Dang, <laughs> valedictorian and worked at a skate park. <laughs> yeah, seriously. A paradox. I, I worked three different jobs. I ran skate park. I worked construction in the morning. I was also a student teacher at the Art Institute. Um full-time student yeah I didn't yeah I didn't really do the regular college shit like of you know oh here's like this fraternity or that or this and I was like I looked at like college as like this is like my job and like for instance I had you know I I got an internship in my senior year and then that internship like I you know negotiated a deal before I even graduated um, for a job. So I graduated, I had my portfolio show on a Friday, graduated on Saturday, did the speaking thing, had Sunday, and then Monday I started work. Dang, dude. So it sounds like you've had this like really good work ethic since like way back in the day, man. Yeah, it's just, I don't know, just maybe that whole thing stemming from my childhood of like the fear of being left behind or not being accepted. Uh, I've just I think that pushed my creativity, you know, and my drive even more because I wanted to prove to people, you know? Yeah. Um, So, yeah. And I obviously, once again, like thinking differently than everyone. And I never really hung out with people that were really my age. I would always, I was drawn to people who are older than me because I wanted to seek more knowledge. Um, Yeah and learn because I fucking love learning new shit like it's oh me too (laughs) so and I'm just fascinated by people's stories and just living life and exploring because you know I realize it we only got like one shot on this thing and do it up baby like I don't want to I don't want to be at the end of my days being like ah what if I would have done this what if I would have done that oh so and that's where most of us end up is with that, like, oh, I should have done this. I remember uh, one of my grandpas, I was like there the day before he died. And literally what he said that day was, oh, I wish I would have gone to this like automotive, whatever museum in like Oklahoma or something. And I was like, that was it. Like, you could have done that. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, lead, or leading off of that, that kind of leads me into just like a quick little intro of like what or how I started my business was, um, so my design and professional career was I worked in design agencies, did a, also did a little freelance, and then a freelance uh, client were uh, turned into uh, my employer, and they hired me as like the creative director, and I rebranded their, uh, their company um, uh, for here and overseas, and just like it was a huge deal. Like I, I did it pretty much all by myself. Um, and then we had other like production artists and stuff in there to help out with doing other things. But I mean, it was kind of just like fake it till you make it. Like I had worked on brand projects and stuff, but I'd never just fully done it 
by myself. And I mean, this is a, a big corporation, you know? So I kind of was just like, it, it's all, <laughs> what is it like uh 90% or it's like 10% real and 90% attitude. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, but you know, don't discount yourself because I, I've had a lot of jobs throughout my life and I feel like the only pattern that I see in every job is like nobody knows what the fuck they're doing like if you don't give somebody an SOP manual they're just like oh so I think it's just a human thing yeah and I mean it's one of those things too like you know I'll fake the funk but I never if I if I'm on claim something you better be damn sure like I'm coming in hot and figuring it out you know uh so I that was the hardest I've ever worked on figuring shit out because I'm like whoa you know because I don't I don't that's the big thing about me is I don't like to disappoint people uh, or let people down so I literally just engulfed my life into that and it was a success I mean they saw a huge percentage increase in their sales um, especially with their the revamping of their website and their um, their sales platform on there for their clients and it just like you know they were hyped <laughs> And that's a you know good thing to learn. So I worked with them for a few years and um, it just came to the point where the company was going because the whole thing was for me to build up an art department in there um, and doing more bids on like uh, bidding out for more projects where it's strictly the design base and they had the manufacturing uh, behind it. And then it came to the point where it was uh, they were shifting the company in a different direction, kind of away from the creative proposal direction and they were like, listen, we know that you're viciously overqualified to be doing what you're doing right now. And, you know, we were, we hired you in the hopes of going this route, but we're kind of going here. So you kind of have two options uh, is either you can stay on and just be doing this. We'll still pay you the same salary X, Y, and Z, but you're not, we're not going to be pitching the creative. Um, or we can give you three months severance and pay for you to go to any design conference you want to. And I was like, Huh, let me think on that. Mm, I'll take number two, please. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then I'm like, whoa, what am I going to do? And obviously I'm like in the train of like, okay, I'm going to go get another agency job and, you know, this and that, keep climbing the ladder. Uh, and then I'm like, what happened was I sent out like a little proposal for a project and didn't think anything of it and went to this design conference and the opening speaker Right before he came on, my phone rings and I pick up and they're like, hey, we've got your proposal. We love your work. We'd love to get you the deposit check, started all this up. And I was like, I'm out of town. I'll let you know I'm back. And so that in my mind, before this whole thing went on, I went through the whole conference and got back that night. I just could not sleep. You know, like when your brain is buzzing, you're just like, oh man, like I got something. I got something. There's something going on. Uh, and I was like, fuck, just let it, let it rip. So I developed my brand, um, wrote down like a, my business plan and it's like, okay, I think I'm going to give this a go. And so then the next thing, the only other person, uh, like I made a decision, but the, the one person that I wanted to run it by before I really made sort of the true commitment is I wanted to run it past my dad. Cause He's the no bullshit guy, <laughs> you know, it'll, it'll tell if you're being a dumbass, you know? And so I remember calling him and then, you know, explaining my concept and what I was trying to do. And I just remember there was like a lot, like a long pause on the phone and I'm like, ah, fuck, here we go. <laughs> and then he's like, you know what, Connor He's like, what you are describing to me is going to be so much harder to do when you wake up at 45 then when you are 25, you're like, remember that you have the rest of your entire life to work. And I've taken that to heart with me for these past seven years that I've been, you know, running this thing. And one, two, I didn't want to like, I'm like, okay, I'm going all in. I don't want to disappoint my dad and let anybody down. And also I don't want to let myself down because like, you know, when I started the company at 25, uh, it was no easy road. I mean, there's three years in, I got, you know, I gave myself a, 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 you know, I funded this all by myself, took no business loans or anything, just hustled and did what I needed to do. 
Um, and you know, I got down to like $17 away from the, Oh shit, I got to figure something else out, you know? Dude, and... I just want to say real quick, what a beautiful gift from your dad, what he said to you. Cause I feel like, you know, you weren't on the road to regret bill anyway, but just him mm-hmm. saying that to you, like, that's what a treasure. And then the second thing is, I forgot what the second thing was. You go in with your story, man. No, it's it's okay. Like, no, I, and I'm so thankful. Like, I mean, uh, gosh, I mean, that's a whole, whole nother podcast we could talk about. It's just like my whole life. So I'm, you know, I am adopted at birth and there's a whole wild story behind that. But, you know, I could go into how I, you know, like meeting my birth mother at 23 and just like all this kind of crazy like figuring out where I came from and just learning about like my folks and just like how grateful I am and how different they are to me like opposed to like my actual like bloodline you know um you know so that's crazy that you got that information (laughs) dropped at 23 and and if you hear some weird noises it's my dog (laughs) Uh, it's all good (laughs) but uh you got bombed with that at 23 and then at 25 that's when you were starting your company yeah I mean like I mean I had known that I was adopted for a long I mean honestly if you put a gun to my head and asked me when you found out like I couldn't tell you I think it was a very traumatic um thing to me just because like my brain fires so heavy and passionately on things so I buried that deep and deep inside of me and really um, and that kind of stems where that whole thing, I don't want to be left behind. I, I don't want to disappoint people. I have to prove myself sort of, you know, comes from, but anyway, that's a whole nother podcast. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I just am thankful for just the other, just like how, like my, the insight that my folks have given me and just like their perspective and way of life and just, Yeah. And I don't, I really don't think that, um, like, there was never a point where, even in growing up, where they told me, like, that I can't do something, or don't, you know, it was more just like, hey, here's an option, and what are you going to do with it? Um, And I think that has really helped me along the way, and just, yeah, like, going to your point, that bit of gold, like, really pushed it forward, and having all those big life things just kind of pushed it even farther. And so, yeah. And at 20, also at 25, I, (laughs) gosh, uh, I went to, I, so obviously found out that I'm like, have my birth father is Argentinian. Um, so I, on 25, I went to Argentina by myself, um, and just explored around to just to see where some of my roots come from and, you know, literally got lost out in the wilderness out there and just had some all kinds of crazy shit happen. And, you know, at 25, like grew up a lot and obviously came out and was like, man, I, yep. Uh, if I can survive that shit, I think I can make a business work. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Isn't fast- it funny how that works, huh? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, yeah. And I mean, that leads me into two as well. If, anybody want to look it up my Pecha Kucha talk um, where I break down uh, the con like redefining the concept of a birthday. I don't do birthday parties or anything anymore. I, I have, since I was 23, I changed it up to your day experiences. Um, and, you know, you kind of mentioned that where we we're saying like, yeah, you just go and do these wild things. And I'm like, yeah, it's kind of based around that, you know, your day experience that I do. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I I think I'm like going off on a little tangent here, but to kind of circle back, I mean, I'm just to kind of wrap up with the whole business thing is, uh, spent 13 years in Charleston, um, built my business up there. And then just this, uh, past, uh, September, moved to uh denver colorado and starting up the second office here i still ha- I still have my office in charleston because i still have a great you know uh brand recognition there and a lot of great clients and friends and stuff so it's not like i picked up and just like 
I'm out of Charleston for good. It's like, you know, I just have to expand and grow my, grow my business and grow my, my life too. And if I don't do that, I don't think I can better service my clients. So now my Charleston clients are going to get like a little inside of bigger scene in the Denver market. And then, you know, the Denver market is going to get my sort of like, you know, grassroots fucking scrappy, like rough edges of like just making shit work like in, uh, from Charleston. So I'm excited to see where this all goes and, um, yeah, just here to explore and learn even more. Man. And I'm so excited for you because, um, it sounds like after every, let's call it wild experience or any experience, really, you kind of turn into a new person. And I don't mean just you. I feel like a person. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the hero's journey, but it's just basically this philosopher guy that says like, hey, all the stories have like the same like 10 or 11 steps. And it's just like there's a hero that wants to go do something. And then they're like, nah. Nah. And then they're like, okay, fine, I'll go do my thing. And then they encounter like, whatever, all the things you find along the journey, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you're thinking about like, Troy or whatever, you know, they encounter like people are coming over here, people are attacking us over here. Then you Mm -hmm. like develop your allies, whatever, go through the whole thing. But at the end of the day, like once you go through that Like you go fight the war and you come back, like you come back a different person, Mm -hmm. like an evolution of yourself. Because now you've lived past that. And and I'm using war, you know, pretty bad example, but it's just kind of like every journey has like a boss level or like a battle in a way that you have to move past. And what happens on the other side of that is like a new level. And I call it an evolution, (laughs) Because yeah. you're kind of a different person. You have more experiences in your belt. And I feel like that always gives you more confidence and more satisfaction in life. It seems mm-hmm. like to me. Yeah, totally. And I, it, that makes me think of like the, the end of my, my talk that I do um, for the Your Day experiences. I finish out with saying, asking the audience like, you know, Who are you going to meet? What are you going to learn? But the most important thing out of it all is who are you going to become? So, yeah, I, and I mean, I guess to think of the, like the creative side too is, yeah, being a creative person, you're always like thinking, what is going to become? Like, what is going to become of this painting? What is going to become of this this design? What's going to become of this product that I'm making, you know? Uh, I think that's a common thing that runs through anybody who has a creative brain because creativity is problem solving. Like, it's probably why I I fucking love Legos. (laughs) Like, (laughs) Now I I feel like I need to see some Lego art. (laughs) I know. I, I should really do some... I should I should do some Lego art. That would be cool. Like integrate the basis of like the blocks, but then like maybe use like some of the design elements and gridding and oh damn, you might have just given me a really good idea. You know, <laughs> something that I've kind of been messing around with is kind of blending techniques. Because at the end of the day, like you said, creativity is solving problems and creativity also is taking different things and blending them together, like finding their commonalities. And something I like doing is kind of, I'm bored of canvas art. So now I find like clay and I put it onto the canvas or whatever other medium, you know, like wood panels and kind of make like a 3D painting, but with like clay, you could make like a 3D painting, but with Legos. Yeah. Yeah. Breaking, breaking out of that 2D realm of like, you know, a lot of my, like just design work and everything is in the 2D realm and is digital. But if I would take that, make like a poster or something with some cool patterns and then imitate those patterns with actual physical Lego blocks, that might be tight. Dude, I'm, I'm so excited to see what comes out of this one. But <laughs> I'm, writing back- that, I'm writing that note down right now. Do it. Yeah, M- MF Legos. Hell yeah, <laughs> MF. <laughs> uh, 
So I do want to talk about your design work a little bit because I have worked with a few designers Mm -hmm. and I just find something really unique about the way you do your work. And it's funny because when I was reading your bio before this interview, Mm -hmm. something on your bio says that your level of energy and passion for life is reflected in the work you produce. And I would very much say, oh yeah, fuck yeah, that's exactly what it is. And you do have like such a high level of energy and passion and it really is palpable in your design. So what's your creative process like when you're doing design work? Is it like the same as when you're doing like your own personal art or do they differ in any way? Um. So, I mean, it's all dependent on the, the problem or the solution that we're trying to gravitate towards. Um, and it, I don't know, I, I love adventure. So I, everything, I put everything back to, it's an adventure. Like even when I'm talking with clients, you know, uh, it's like, I'm so excited for you guys' adventure. Um, like, and I think what sets my creative process apart is like, you know, to me, I just like make this story of like, okay, here is, here are the characters and here are the things that they have and here's where they want to kind of go. And then there's just this blank canvas and it's like, okay, I have to build the roadmap of this journey. And when I, you know, interview them and ask them these deep questions of like who they are, why they matter, what, what they want to achieve with this, this brand is, I'm, I'm building this roadmap and this story block. Um, and I get excited about it. Cause it's like me, I'm like living a movie. I'm like, Oh man. And, and I love seeing people uh, achieve their dreams and their passions. That's why uh, I, st- I strive to work with people who have um, deep passions for what they do or sell um, and who have real stories. Cause I, I don't want to work with people who are like, yeah, I just want to make a bunch of money. Like this thing is like the cool thing right now. Like, I just make something cool and yeah, so we can make money. I'm like, pass. I don't want to associate with that. I'd much rather be like, Hey, this is we're a husband and wife. We, we have been wanting to do this concept for a while and we want to, we, we have this idea, but we just don't know how to, we don't know how to build it or like get this, just get it rolling. And so not only do I, uh, you know, obviously create the visual side of it. So, I guess this leads into my uh, my company's um, tagline, which is a visual craftsman. And some people are like, what is that? Well, it's the culmination of two things. So the visual side is we come up with the help with the the vision and uh, visual side of it, of your concept. And then the craftsman side is we actually build it out and make it real. Um, so the design process like goes from every time we sign on with a brand, it's like, how are we going to make this thing work and be successful and get you to that mountain peak that you want to? And how are we going to have a fun journey along there? Um, because I believe true successful brands um, work when people can feel that passion and energy through there uh, opposed to, okay, let's just look like everybody else and like not, let's not say anything sort of, uh, you know, controversial or anything like that. Let's not stand for anything particular so we can like appease to everybody. It's like, no, like, you, I mean, it's just like going on a date. Like you, you don't, you're not going to call that person back if they're just this bland something and they have no personality. You're like, wow, I learned nothing about this. I have no intentions of engaging this anymore. It's the same with the brand. Like, you want to know, like, and people get excited about when, when somebody else is exciting uh, about something, you're instantly gravitated towards it. So I try and put as much of that into the design and just the messaging as possible. Um, gosh, I know I'm like rambling on about this, but I hope some of this is sort of making sense. And yeah, you're not rambling at all, dude. Like, do not worry. (laughs) I hope I'm giving a little bit of knowledge out there and explaining, but, uh, yeah, I just get excited about this stuff. I mean, like right now, I'm like looking at this this new wine brand that I'm working on. Um, it's for a California red blend. And just, 
yeah, just that whole process of how that's going to come to fruition. And, um, and I mean, too, I'm really excited about like on Saturday going out to Lady Sin, you know, in Charleston, um, that the new Cantonese, uh, restaurant concept, um, from Kwai Fe. Oh and, yeah. Yum. Yeah. It's, and two, just like coming up with that, that brand system and just like working on, like, it was amazing. And another thing I really love too is, um, developing the messaging, um, for brands. Um, a, I mean, I just recently did a brand refresh for a real estate company and, you know, they've been in business for several years and everything and, you know, have a, a very clear set of who they are, but they just didn't know a concise way to explain that. And I developed the, the tagline of, for them, uh, which is discovering the heart of a home. Dang, and dude. So, and they were just like, wow, like that is sums up our ent- entire business, like of like what we're trying to do. Um, and those are those happy moments. And that's that passion. That's that definitive thing, like, you know, that's going to set them apart. Um, you know, just as we're all unique individuals, when I'm creating a, a brand, it's like, I'm creating this personality and I, I want to have this voice and everything. And, um, so that way too, it's a tool for you going forward. It's not something that like, Oh, cool. We just made some cool looking shit. Like, let's hope it works. It's like, no, like these things speak to like who the business is and what the solution is going to be. And if you're hyped on them, then you're going to use them more, you know? So I, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of running in circles on that, but I hope that kind of explained some of the process. For sure. And I do think that for me, design, I mean, anybody can make a logo. And I'm not saying, you know, like Mm -hmm. taking anything away from your craft at all. Mm -hmm. But what I think, like, you really do bring this, like, level of artistry to it. And it's interesting because, yeah, you make, like, great visuals. And but what I find, like, super awesome is that that you were talking about how you extracted, like, their concept out of them. And I would, like, call that, like, their vibe and same thing kind of like when you mentioned like working with clients like just working with commercial clients is hard because sometimes it's just like there's no vibe there except for like make cool shit get money (laughs) and like that's not cool at all yeah and i just you can't can't fake that kind of funk you know (laughs) exactly people people can you know cool you you can't make cool cool is just cool And also, if you are turning on your cool, like on purpose, like turn that shit off because it ain't cool. Like if it's cool, you don't know it's there. Yeah. Oh, people can like, it's like a fake smile. Like, you know, when you see people with the fake smile, you know, if you just create this fake brand and it's, it, you know, people sense that out and it's like, cool, you just invested all this money into this thing and it speaks to nothing, you know, like uh, nobody cares, like have some flavor that's it i'm always trying to put a little flavor in life have some flavor i love that <laughs> and speaking about flavor i see you like making these like delicious looking meals all the time <laughs> like my, when did you have time to learn how to like yeah when did you have time to learn how to cook like that uh i mean it, it just started from i'm always curious about how things work uh and I obviously, like I said, I love to learn and love to work with my hands. Um, I, I literally, I don't, I, it's hard for me to learn from uh, just listening to people. Like I physically have to do it and sort of figure it out like with my hands. So I, I think with my hands. Um, and so just seeing like, you know, my mom in the kitchen, um, all growing up and she would cook all our meals. I, I would just get curious and I'd want to be help out, you know, cause I love collaborating and love being a part of something. And so I just helped out that way and just was fascinated with it because I love to fucking eat. <laughs> and Yo, who uh, doesn't? Yeah. Team munches. Um, so I 
just got curious with it. And then when I started to, you know, I was like, wow, it, I can mix these flavors with this flavor and it creates this new flavor. I just I kind of got hooked just like the same way I figured out, whoa, I can take my creativity and use my art and everything and like solve problems. I'm hooked. So I, you know, just over the years was just in the kitchen and wanted to do stuff. And I love working with my hands. Uh, and then I just found myself like watching like cooking shows. And then, you know, my mom and I would do like cooking, like uh, classes together and stuff. It was super fun. And then, you know, as I got older, I got, would learn more and got better. And then I obviously love going out to eat and just when I go out to eat, it's because I want to research, like I want to go and I want to get stuff that like I can't make. And so I can like learn from the process. Um, and that's kind of how I got into that niche of doing all these uh, restaurant brands is, you know, when I was starting the company out, I, I didn't really, I didn't have a lot of money. I had a lot, I just had time and talent. And so I would go out to these restaurants and just like order like an appetizer or something like that. Cause I couldn't go full blown, you know, and get a cheap shitty beer or something like that. But I'd always try and like sit at the chef's table or sit near like in a seat where I could see the kitchen. And I just was fascinated by it. And I like learned the language of like how like, chefs would talk to each other and just all this stuff, you know, kind of like this little like fan fly on the wall, just like, Oh my gosh, like getting so hyped about this. And just the more happened. And then I started doing work for restaurants. And I mean, you know, selfishly, I was like, I, you know, I'm like, yeah, I'm thankful. I'm getting to do the design stuff, but I'm like, really, I'm like, take me into the kitchen. I want to learn, you know? So I'd hold meetings. Like I'd just go and like, say what's up and see him in the kitchen and just learning that whole, um, you know, little subculture. And it just fascinated me. And, and it also helped to build better restaurant brands because like when you can speak the language, it's, it's way better. It's like, you know, if you, you travel, travel to a different country, you're, you're not going to make it as quickly if you can't speak the language. So, and you can level with people more. So I think what helped is like having that passion for cooking already and then meeting the chefs and restaurants that have deep passions for what they do. And chefs are very passionate about what they do. And I fucking love that shit. So when I got mixed with that, like my level of passion, their level of passion, I'm just like, yes, let's create something awesome. And it exploded. Yeah. So it's like, you, you know, way more about cooking than I do, but you know, and then I can like come to the table and be like, okay, I want to, you know, make your, I want to present your passion and like what you're about to the level it can be, you know? Uh, and I just, yeah. So I got fascinated with cooking and I've just gotten better and better over the years and just learned from all these amazing chefs that I've worked with. And um, they inspire me every day and, you know, just like working in the kitchen with my mom and um, yeah, it's so therapeutic to me. Like I love nothing more uh, and I love community and being with people. So I love to cook for people. Um, and yeah, so that's where I create all these dishes and I love challenging myself. So and challenge uh, yourself you do because i've seen you make some complex ass shit like i thought i love cooking and kind of like i enjoy the same thing of just like taking different flavors and like mixing them especially because yeah. i grew up like mexican so mm -hmm. just i love like when i moved to the u.s like being able to take all of that spices and then like putting them over these like weird other yeah. like meal type of things yeah. Um, but yeah man whenever I saw you I was like damn this dude is taking it to the next level <laughs> oh my yeah. god here give me one second my dog is freaking out let me open the door for her yeah no problem all right so sorry about that but thank uh you it, it's all good i guess they, they were uh getting excited about me talking about food <laughs> dude they're like food yeah give me some of that come on yeah S i speaking... had the worst dogs they literally will not stop asking for it oh man <laughs> speaking about uh food and just like you know i was talking about that new lady sin um uh concept i literally on my 
Insta just got a message from, I guess, this uh, uh, food and drink like blogger saying like, oh my gosh, 100% fully obsessed with this branding. Dude, so. it's so good. I love the colors and I love the backstory for it because isn't it like, how do you say Lady Sion? Yeah, la- like, I mean, just the easy way, Lady Sin. Okay, um, Lady Sin. Yeah. So wasn't she like some like real badass woman? Oh, yeah. Yeah, she um, she was, uh, put it this way, was in a time where women were not seen in any sort of um, government realm or like any sort of like power figure. She like broke through that and was not only uh, like a diplomat and like strive for peace and bring unity to people, but she was also like, you fuck around, you find out, you know? <laughs> And uh, first and foremost was trying to promote peace, but like, yeah, would definitely shut things down. It was an incredible warrior in general. And um, so with that brand, it really came about was like, how do we celebrate this like powerful, like feminine um, message and just inspire? I mean, that's, I mean, I came up with that concise, you know, um, you know, messaging that was something that, you know, how do I take all of this amazingness of this incredible woman in history and exemplify that into a tagline and, but also relay that into like uh, a restaurant, you know, how do I bring it, bring all of that power and amazing backstory, but then bring it into associate it with, with the, the food. So that's where the, you know, protect, unify and entice tagline came from is she was a protector of her people. So not only like that can correlate into protecting the flavor, protecting the authenticity of the, these dishes that they're creating. The unify side is, you know, what's better than coming to a, a, a big table of a group of friends. So unifying all these different people through the commonality of food. And then the entice is like, you know, there's a little, that's why, you know, the icon, she's got that little smirk and that little sass going on, like, you know, ooh, look at our like good food and everything. And like, look what we got going on. Like we're enticing you into check this out. Um, yeah. So that's a little bit of the inside of the the branding process of. Thanks for I sharing guess. that, dude. That is so dope. I do have one more question about that. Yeah. How did you pick the color palette? Because it's super bright. Oh my gosh. Uh, so once again, like, you know, my clients are, I, I love hearing their stories and I like encourage them to just like, there's no wrong answer. Just like push it all out there. Like, don't be scared to put any, you know, and, you know, with my clients, you know, for Lady Send, they're just amazing creative people as well um, with strong passions and beliefs and all that stuff. And, you know, so they, when I go through the, the questionnaire sort of process, um, you know, I ask certain questions to get that out of them and then they can push out and give me stuff in return. And just through that process, we went down this, we found some really cool inspirational images. And when we kind of came up with the, the, the vibe and sort of the direction, cause uh, I, my company works in three different phases. It's the discovery phase, then it's the creative phase and then it's production. So discovery is finding out who you are, why you matter, like the whole, brand concept and everything and figuring out is this the direction we want to be going and then from there once that's approved we go into the creative side where we take that roadmap and that sort of let's say you know our grocery list um and take all those groceries cook something up and that's the creative side and once that's approved then the production side is obviously formatting everything out and you know getting it ready so you can uh present it to the world so with that, coming up with that color palette, it came from just like some wild, like different, um, like illustrations and everything, like these cool, like line art from uh, these like different artists and such that had these very powerful, like feminine um, figures uh, with these interesting patterns and such. Um, and we wanted something that wanted to evoke fun and um you know, energy, uh, because, and also to something that was, it was feminine, but it also was not 
over the top you know it was more like going off like kind of some like cool like neon sort of style colors and stuff and just basing it around that period of time and um, which plays into the personality of my clients as well which you know you you can't create around solely around like your identity unless you're literally you are the product that you are selling but it's good to have like little notes of you in there um to help have that authenticity to it um and so yeah that that's kind of where the the color palette came from and we wanted to have some association too with their other restaurant concept Kwaife. Um, so that was a challenge to how to like, how do we take some of the Kwaife colors and put that into Lady Sin? So um, another challenge of like cross pollinating two brands, but making them very different, you know, cause when they, uh, you know, have their their portfolio of all their projects you know you don't it doesn't want to look the same across the board and I think you did a beautiful job at like coupling those together like the aesthetics of the black lines the bright colors I mean just such a good job you did mention something though that made me curious to ask another question Mm mm-hmm you said adding elements on yourself unless you, because, you know, unless you're marketing yourself as a product, which is something that I feel like a lot of artists slash creatives kind of do. So on that topic, how do you, what are your feelings about like artists branding themselves? Like, should we do it? Should we like really invest money into working with somebody like you to kind of help us figure it out? But what also for the people that, you know, may not have the resources, but do have the time and talent, talent, what kind of, uh, what do you think about those things? Hmm. Yeah, that's an, uh, that's an amazing question. And like my immediate reaction to that is, um, is asking a question back of, what do you want to get out of it? What are you trying to do? Um, Cause then that'll, that will answer the question of whether or not you should invest. If, if you are trying to uh, build this, the, uh, a brand that's going to like, you know, going to be this uh, own little entity of it and like be a actual functioning sort of business, then yes, it makes sense to invest into it. But if you are just, you just love doing art and you just, your end goal is like, I just want to make the art and I, you know, I don't really care, then yeah, it doesn't make sense to invest into a brand system or anything like that. Um, it, look at it as like a tool. It's like, okay, I'm a, you know, if I want to be a carpenter, I kind of need to have a saw. So <laughs> it's the same thing is like, you ask yourself, like, what do I want to be? What do I want to do with this? And, uh, you know, a brand system is going to be that tool to help you navigate through that and uh is that something you need and if you don't have the and i understand like it it is a large investment for a lot of people um is start from the ground and then sort of do your because obviously like me when i i didn't have money starting out so i just had time and talent and i used that time to research and understand the language of it and go from there so my suggestion to people who may not have the the monetary value or the you know the money at the time is just do your research and learn as much as you can on your own so then you can have a better informed decision down the road because you know money will come like it, it'll it comes around any way shape or form you know and you you might have to go do some other shit that's not in that realm to make that happen um ain't no shame in that game yeah you know gotta 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 hustle you know get them things going and find them scams <laughs> no, gotta find the scams oh yeah you know i'm a big advocate for scams <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> that, i know i think about that all the time like when like a little like little something comes up i'm like oh shit 
step up <laughs> to working them scams. <laughs> working them scams. And uh, I just call it scams because I love finding creative ways to make money. And, yeah. you know, not like in a, oh, I need all the money kind of way, but everybody yeah. needs money to pay their rent and stuff. And being yeah. a creative, I feel like that is the biggest gift to myself. I can mm -hmm. figure out all these like creative ways to make it work. <laughs> yeah. And I love that you do like it, redefine that as like, Cause honestly, I really don't like the the term hustle. Like I, you know, hustle, I associate with like, okay, uh, that's, you know, when you're on the basketball court time to hustle or something, but you know, in life, if you're trying to hustle, like with the business stuff, it's, you get burned out on it. It's like, no, you need to be like calm and concise and like really using your brain more than your body. Cause like, you're just sitting there fucking flailing around and shit. Like you're, you're not going to see the real brighter picture on the end of the road um yeah i love that you redefined it as as scams because it is like i think about it some days i'm like holy shit i just got i got paid to draw like devil crazy skulls on a beer label and then sell that you know like whoa like is this a scam like it doesn't feel real like shouldn't i be at like a a fucking desk punching numbers in or something you know like or like coca-cola they're literally creating poison that gives people gives people diabetes and makes them addicted <laughs> and they're on the world that's a fucking scam right there that big scam right there you big know? scams yeah i'm just like into the little scams that cause no harm instead are kind of for the good of all you know like mm -hmm. making a mural or a painting mm -hmm. or whatever <laughs> yeah no i and yeah so the yeah just figuring out different little ways to you know you can re you can do I, i'll say this is you can do as much research as you possibly can and like uh see what other people are doing and all that but don't think that that is just the one way to do it like take a ton like take a bunch of different perspectives and then analyze that data and then figure out how you're going to work with it. Cause we're such different. We, we all learn and think so differently that no one way is going to be the way to do it. Um, like the way that I've done it, like guarantee it would not work for 99.9% .9 of the people who've done it, you know, cause they're uh, not you. Yeah, exactly. So I, you know, when I try and offer up information, I just tell people just be, uh, Take in as much information as you can and and to like just be open to new opportunities and a big one too when I like talk to like colleges and like students and stuff like that is and you know people trying to come up is and they're like yeah how do you get into this and that and I'm like just uh, first and foremost start with the h word help like when you go into a situation and you're like hey I want to get into this you know scene don't ever go in like saying oh like what can i get from this or like barging in the first thing that you come out because everybody needs a little bit of help you know the people who are the the industry that you're trying to get into and the people who you're probably connecting to are probably busy as shit and don't have a lot of time and they're probably like stressed in some sort of way trying to do this stuff and at the end of the day you know it'd be nice to be like hey if somebody coming from the outside is like, hey, I want to give, how could I help? How how can I help? That's the most powerful thing that has pushed my creativity, my connections and everything is going into any new situation in any place in the world is where, how can I help? And by doing that first and creating those those relationships, the byproduct of that will become the monetary value of uh things like they'd be like oh yeah cool uh, yeah would love to hire you or come in on this project or you know oh we're doing this project would love to hire you for this and um just giving off that persona rather than here's my resume you should read it and then you should hire me or like hey here's my project proposal like you should buy this or like hey here's my pro you know it's we're already bombarded by so much shit of uh oh, instagram ads Oh my gosh. Yeah. 
I know, that really gosh. is a, go- a golden nugget of advice is start with help. And if you are listening to us right now and they're like, well, I don't even know what I want to help. I always like to recommend start with you. Like, how can you help yourself? Like, what do oh. you need today from the world, in the world? What do you love? What do you want to see more of? You know, start solving the problems for yourself And it might seem selfish, but selfish isn't stupid. You know, it, you got to start with yourself because otherwise, like, how are you going to find out? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got to make that self-discovery because, uh, you know, it's not anybody else's job to find out who you are. You know, <laughs> like the, everybody, everybody else is trying to do that themselves. You know, they need to worry about that. And um people are way more receptive of working and collaborating with people when they can get that sense of, okay, this person knows who they are, what they are trying to achieve and how then they can figure out, okay, well then this person could be an integral part to this equation. Um, yeah. So I say so keep exploring and ask a shit ton of questions. Um, <laughs> that is I, I just think back, like when I was in school, like, and especially college, like I always sat at the front and I pretty sure I annoyed the shit out of my professors. because I just would ask so many questions. Um, but in my mind, I'm like, shit, this, this stuff costs a lot of money. I was like, I'm going to get as much damn shit out of it as I possibly can. You know, like, because I wasn't in it for like, I already do fun, crazy, wild, dumb shit in my personal life and I'm like, <laughs> it's like <laughs> why don't i and okay i'm i'm paying for this thing i need to get as much out of it as there because you know i mean i'm pretty frugal when it comes to the dollar bill so i'm like if i'm gonna spend money on something i'm gonna make sure it's it's i'm gonna get the most out of it you know that's pretty so, impressive that even at a young age like going into college you had that mentality Because, I mean, I don't think that's very common. Or maybe it is. I just kind of feel like that's not my experience. Like, I even paid for my own college. And I was there and I was like, ah, I don't really feel like going for it. Yeah, I, I mean, I just think it from going back again, have like, I just kind of figured shit out faster and just was, I'm always like, what, you know, what's in this thing? Like, what can I learn new what, and everything? And, and I also like did a lot of, growing up um when i lived over in england um i moved out of the country right when i was like 10 turning 11 um and had some very formative years there um that uh yeah i did a lot of dumb shit <laughs> over there at a very what was young- the biggest lesson that you learned there if you had to like say only one thing oh shit uh Wow. I, man, that's a deep one. because like, the, it was such a whirlwind of just so like one being, uh, moving to a new country at that age and, you know, dealing with like living, going from like s- suburbia, you know, very kind of like sheltered you know environments to moving to this new country to a crazy city where like you know i learned about learned about drugs learned about gang violence learned about drinking learned about all kinds of shit you know like at a super young age like i mean shit i had my first (laughs) first beer when i was 11 damn um yeah boddington's pub ale we stole it from my mate's uh dad's fridge and we took it out to this park and there was this ramp out there. And that's where I started skateboarding too, is in England and went out there and had our little beer and like drank a beer behind the ramp and just like, <laughs> <laughs> so it just, uh, yeah. And then you're traveling around and like by bus and train and, you know, all kinds of stuff. And I got the, my biggest lesson, I guess I, I think my just street smarts and just being aware of my surroundings is the biggest lesson I learned from England. Cause you know, you, you don't leave your shit lying around your shit will get taken. <laughs> you don't leave your doors unlocked. You know, not everybody is going to be your best friend. Like, 
you know, you, you go into the wrong neighborhood, you're going to get stabbed. Like, you know, like you get beat up, like it's, it's pretty rough. It's really rough, but also like a really beautiful place too. And there are some great people, you know? Um, but yeah, I, I grew up very, very fast from living in England and it was very apparent to me um, when I moved back to the country and was in that, you know, high school, you know, going back and it was just like, damn, all these kids are learning shit that I learned when I was 14, you know, <laughs> and just doing the dumb shit that I did when I was like 12, 13, you know, so it was like, I was like, whoa, I just, when I moved back to the United States, I was like, I just went back in time. So I think that's what helped to focus me when I moved here. And like, so in college, I'm like, you know, a lot of people are like, live that sort of sheltered, like soft little bubble life, you know? And then when they go to college, it's like, oh my God, I'm free. I can, oh, let's experiment, do everything. And I was like, I, I did that in a, another country and just, got it out of my system <laughs> kind of you know <laughs> don't don't get me wrong I still do dumb shit you know but uh <laughs> that was uh yeah definitely attributed to like growing up significantly faster in England to helping with me being focused on yeah doing college and getting a job because in my mind I'm like okay this is the thing you have to do might as do might as well do it really well get it over with and then I can do whatever the fuck I want <laughs> this is a great example of showing how growth lies on the other side of your comfort zone <laughs> yeah oh yeah <laughs> so before we wrap up I want to talk to you real quick or just tell us about your newest project the beer spa because when it comes to creativity I feel like that is such a creative concept yeah um so that is our first client in the Denver area um so they uh we were hired to do their um exterior signage design they they had already had their um like a little initial uh brand package just like a logo and like a color palette done um and you know they, that's another thing too it's uh, I guess that's something I'm trying to work on as well is just, um, with the businesses, some people are like, they're like, oh, wow, we like you do hand painted signage and murals. Like, then they uh, hire us for that. And then, like, oh my gosh, like you also do all the brand stuff as well. And then it just like tailors into more work. And same thing with this. They're like, wow, like we had no idea. Um, you know, you crushed it with our exterior signage and our direction, you know, and, you know, now we'd love to hire you to do like, we wish we'd have known you before we went into all this stuff. So, um yeah they're they're an amazing couple they are starting up this concept it's nothing else like it in the denver area um it is integrating the like wellness uh industry and like the day spa aspect with the tap room experience and they're trying to break down any sort of like um gender specific role of it um because you know there is that stigma of like oh yeah day spas are only for you know the ladies and like oh the tap room is for the boys to go get some drinks you know uh so they're trying to cross promote like lay that out to where it's like okay this is a a new way you know relax differently like thinking about um you can go in and have this full spa experience and then you'll also have your own, you can self-serve, you have your own taps. So you can, they have beer, they have wine, they have cider, they have non-alcoholic beer, um, they have kombucha. So it's this whole like tea and coffee. And um, I mean, it's, it's pretty incredible. Like, I think they're going to take off and, you know, their husband and wife, they work their corporate jobs, quit their uh corporate jobs and and travel the world and research you know different cultures and businesses and then came up with this concept from uh experiencing something similar overseas and then they're like all right you know what we're going all in and they moved to denver with just like a <laughs> with a just a rolly suitcase you know and they 
work their asses off to, you know, get investors and, and um, business grants. And I mean, this is their life. Like they are fully putting themselves into this. Like it's, it's not an option of like, Oh, here's a cool thing that might make us some money. You know, they're like, no, we have to make this work because this is our livelihood and they want to build a community around it too. And um, that's what gets me so excited about it. I just had a meeting with them uh, the other day and just, you know, congratulated them on getting closer to opening. And, um, you know, they reiterated how they're, you know, something they even said in the initial, um, our business dealings was that this is not, we don't see this as being just a singular transaction with you. This, they're like, we see this as being a long-term partnership. Um, I feel I really, the rebranding coming soon. I <laughs> know. I'm just like, I would love to rebrand them. There's so much potential, but you know, and I also never sell people on things they don't immediately need, you know, like, yes, it'd be great if they could, but at the first and foremost, like they got to get open. They got to build their client base. They need to, they need to generate some money, you know? And it, my whole thing is like, I'm not in it for the quick dollar. I'd much rather see, you know, people succeed and be successful. Um, and if they choose to come back and work with my company, you know, amazing. I, I will give you, you know, utmost passion and energy that you possibly can have. Um, but also too, I never look back on like, Hey, you know, it's just like relationships. They, they run their course sometimes. And, um, and I just and wish everything, everybody. dude, like life is a cycle. Like you, like you're born and then you're going to die. Like you, yeah. it's a cycle. Everything is a cycle. Yeah. So I know that was a long winded answer for that, but I, once again, like I, my clients, I, I, I feel their passion and like, I am over so grateful that they hire in my business and um, support because it's, means a lot it like literally is a piece of the puzzle of my heart that like keeps it beating strong and creating amazing work and that is something that i wish more of us people who are engaging in creativity professionally as you and i are to remember like that is the biggest thing we bring is like our passion our heart and you know, our creativity is that freedom that we allow ourselves to tap in where other people may not. And that's where we like pick all these like magnificent ideas out of. So it's, you know, some people might seem like sensitivity or, you know, being overly emotional, passionate about something as a weakness, but it doesn't have to be as long as, you know, like you so masterfully have done I believe is just like channel that passion into purpose and then you know slowly you start pushing the rock rock up the mountain and then next thing you know you're up top and it's just going down on its own so yeah pretty good cool. you're, you're once you kind of get to one mountain peak you're and you're at the top looking around like me I'm like what other mountain peaks are around here what other what's the next adventure I can go on and how else can I challenge myself you know? yep I mean, it really is where the sauce of life is found, you know, because got to keep on going. Oh, yeah. Just got to keep on keeping on. <laughs> Dude, it's been such a treat talking to you. Do you yeah, have sorry. any last words you would like to leave as inspiration for everybody listening today? Hmm. Uh, I, I mean, first and foremost, like, thanks for having me on. And I'm glad that I could be a part of this. Um and I, yeah, I guess if, and if anybody's curious, um, you, you can check out my business at follow seven.com. Uh, and if you really want to stay up to date, uh, with where is seven going, you know, uh, is the number seven and then a visual craftsman that's on Instagram. Um, I get people love the stories cause I try and put as much as the adventure on there as possible. And there's a uh, lot of it guys. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I guess to leave like with any sort of inspiration side is, uh, maybe I'll just leave with the, just a brief little saying of like what the, your day is and maybe send a, a challenge out to the listeners to this is, um, maybe to reconsider, you know, we all have birthdays coming up in this new year is maybe 
try this out. And so I give myself, I redefine it as a birthday as your day is celebrating this special time that you were brought into this earth and this, you are uniquely you. So I give myself three guidelines every time my birthday comes up is number one, scare yourself. Number two, learn something new. And then just me, I, I try and meet at least seven new people and not just like ask like how the weather is, but like go up and talk to somebody you would never talk to and ask them their story. Here's something. Um, and you can, you can go on and I do this by myself and you go out and figure you can go big or small, like just go on something somewhere where you've never been before. It could be in a new spot in your neighborhood, or you could jump on a plane and go to Thailand or something. You know, I know not COVID times, but just something that is attainable within your situation right now and just give it a go. Um, so, and what that'll do is brings me back to the question is like, you ask yourself at the end of that process after your, your day is, how did I scare myself? What did I learn? Who did I meet? But more importantly, who did I become and who am I going to be through this new year going forward? I fucking love that so much, dude. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Thank you for sharing your inspiration with us and your work, dude. Like it really is amazing and like i said you know mainly because your energy is like so reflected into it thanks for being here my brother i hope i get to see you when you're in town yeah for sure i I fly into charleston on saturday afternoon and i'll be there for a month so i'm sure i'm sure we'll get up and see each other so yeah that'd be awesome man awesome thank you so much yeah thank you too see you have a great day man